Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. A few of you asked me to make a video about different Hermes leathers, so I thought I'd discuss it today. Hope you are all doing well as well. Um, I've been a bit sick the last week or so, so I'm starting to feel much better and I'm just very excited to make videos again. I'm a little bit out of practice, but yes, we're getting right back into it. I wanted to go over most common Hermes leathers today or things you might find in the boutique. Hermes has like literally probably like a hundred leathers out there so I'm not going to go through all of them but the thing that I love about Hermes is that they do go into detail about what leather they use on all their bags. There's a lot of information out there to uh, learn about Hermes leathers as well and the thing that I like about Hermes compared to other brands is that they do specify what animal the, the leather comes from all that whereas sometimes if you go on like the Gucci website it would just say leather bag and you don't don't have any idea whether it's a pig or a calf or whatever and actually a lot of gucci pieces like i know the wallets they're embossed to look like pigskin which is what the vintage ones were indeed pigskin which is actually a cheaper grade of leather but they're actually made of calf skin but they've been embossed to look like another leather so i don't really like that lack of transparency that some brands have with their leather and I think a good thing about Hermes is that they really pride themselves in the quality of their leather and the di different finishes they have to offer. And it actually makes the uh, collecting Hermes bags pretty exciting because although you might think that there's a, like a million Birkins out there, they're all, they you know they're in different colors, different leathers, and there's a lot of different things that you can enjoy comparing to um, what leather you get it in. I think anyway. So the most popular probably leather from Hermes is Togo leather and this leather was actually introduced in 1997 and it's from a baby female calf it has smaller grains to it compared to a Clement leather and sometimes it also has veining which are these like little streaks that you'll see uh, down the leather. Now, um, Togo leather, it doesn't come in all Hermes bags. Some leathers will only come in some specific styles, but you'll most commonly see it in Birkins and Cowleys. For example, this Birkin 25 is in Togo, and you can see that it does absorb color quite well. It has a real softness to it. It's also quite durable because there's a grain. So scratches are not going to be easy to do on this bag you will get like corner wear and that sort of thing but it is a pretty fuss free grain pretty light as well like comparing to clement leather this leather is much um easier to carry i would say and it's also okay with a few raindrops like if you get rain on it it's not going to destroy the bag it's pretty durable which is why it's so popular so that brings me to the next leather which is clement leather which you can also get in Birkins and Kelly's. Uh, Clement's first appeared in 1992 um, in different Hermes collections. Comes from a male calf, and uh, the technique produced to make that thick grain is called uh, drumming. So you often see the picotin come in Clement's. I would say Clement's, it tends to slouch a lot more, um, and I would say it has a bit more of like a luster to it compared to Togo, which is a little bit more of a matte look. And I love the thick grain of Clement's. It's definitely a little bit more casual. And as I said before, it's a lot heavier as well. So if you get a Kelly 32 in Clement's, it's going to be much heavier than if you get a Kelly 32 in Togo. But some people like how Clement's kind of reflects color. I would say it, it kind of makes color look more saturated in a way. Also, some people like the thick grain of it. Uh, you can get Clement's leather in quite a few styles, like even my Mini Lindy. Uh, Mini Lindy's often don't come in Togo. They only come in Clement's or Swift. And same for the Lindy 26. Um, I've never seen like a Togo Lindy. I don't know. It could exist, but most commonly you'll see Clement's leather. Uh, maybe because Clement's also lends itself to look more casual because of that grain. So that's why they use it for that. And it's also very soft. I find that Clement's feels pudgier than Togo leather. So um, yeah, I, I know for some people, they probably not a huge fan of Clements as well, because I think with the rain, it's a little bit more delicate compared to the Togo as well. The previous owner of my Pico Tin got hot water on this bag and the hot water actually left a blister on the bag. So I would say be careful with hot water. It can affect the grain. Actually, it looks like it's like melted it down. 
uh, so there's that. So that's Clement's leather, another really popular leather from Hermes that you can still get from the store. Um, chev leather is one of my favorite leathers, um, and there's a few types of chev leather. Um, I'm actually a, t a bit confused about all the different types, to be completely honest, but I know that the most common one recently has been the uh, chev mysore, which um, is like this. Previously, they did Chef de Colomandel, which I don't think you can get anymore, but the Chef de Colomandel, it had quite a significant spine down the center of a lot of the bags. Like if you got it in a Cali, you can actually see uh, where the spine is on the and the goat. So Chev is goat skin, um, and I think they get it from India. Um, this Chev... My saw leather, it absorbs color really well and it has less of, of a significant spine down the center. It also has a slight luster to it and it is extremely lightweight comparing to Clemence and Togo and it's very stiff and it's super durable. I would really recommend this for like everyday use because I have a Calvi card holder in this same leather and it's held up so well, like it's insane. I chuck it everywhere. I've got it completely soaked in water before too because I don't know how, but I think I had it in my gym bag and then my water bottle leaked all over it and it like survived and it looks completely fine so I would say Chev it's extremely durable um a lot of people say it doesn't scratch but I still found that it can scratch up a little bit um I also have Chev in this mini plume bag which is actually coming back uh I think pretty soon uh, you're able to get the mini plumes again um, but yeah, you can see it has a very fine grain to it. You can also get um, Sham Killer leather, a uh, Chev Sham Killer, which I've seen in a gorgeous color called Rose Pop. And that is, a, a, I think apparently it's a little bit more shiny and it looks incredible in that Rose Pop color. So yeah, that is a gorgeous leather. And then there's also a, another type of Chev called Chev Chandra, which I've never seen personally before, Chev Chandra, and I don't think it's as common as the Mysore Chev. Definitely one of my favorite leathers because I love that luster to it. Um, but yeah, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody is a fan of this type of grain, but I, I personally really like it. Very common leather is Epsom leather, which I have a few bags in Epsom actually. Epsom was actually uh, introduced, I think, like in the early 2000s. I could be wrong about that, but it replaced... Uh, Cuchevel leather. So before that, they had Cuchevel, and it's basically a heat stamped leather. Um, so Cuchevel, it's very similar to Epsom. Uh, this is a vintage Kelly, and you can see it has like a bit of a pebbly grain. Um, it's super hard, and it keeps its structure really well. It's also not super easy to scratch. I found this one in particular, you don't notice many scratches on it and it holds, holds the structure incredibly well compared to like Clement or Togo or something like that or even Swift. So it looks great in cellier bags or more structured shapes and it's pretty durable. Now I found that a lot of people on YouTube don't like um, Epsom actually. So Epsom came after the Cuchevel leather um, and it's also very similar but the grain is slightly different and I would say it has more of a matte appearance. Epsom does take to color really well as well. So it's great for, um, you know, things like this bubble gum color. It showcases the color really well. However, I do find that it does scratch actually. A lot of people say it's really durable, um, but I have found that it gets scratches on it still. Um, and particularly in this Kelly, I've noticed quite a few scratches. And when it comes to sparring Epsom leather, it doesn't spar as well as some of the other leathers. It's actually the scratches get quite embedded in the, the leather. So um, I think it's, I still like it. And in terms of uh, water resistance, it's really awesome. Like I've got this wet and it's just like trickled off. So it's really fuss free compared to something like a box calf, which is a heritage leather. And actually box calf was most commonly used in vintage bags, which I'll go to box calf now because box calf is actually, uh, I think the oldest leather from Hermes or one of the oldest. And it's not as common to find in the boutiques now, but you can still get it. I've seen it in Constance bags and you can definitely get it in uh, Kelly's as well. Um, but, and there are a few different kind of types of box calf as well, but the classic box calf, it does develop a patina over time and gets this beautiful luster to it. However, it's not very good with the rain. If you get it really wet, it can develop blisters and it does show scratches pretty easily. 
That being said, the scratches can fade over time with wear, and a lot of people love uh, box just for the um, luxurious smooth leather. It's a more of a polished leather. So as opposed to Epson, which is heat stamped, um, it's been polished down and it has this gorgeous breathtaking uh, shine to it. But yeah, if you are shopping vintage, uh, it is pretty common to find box cuff bags for really great deals. Actually, box cuff sells for much more than um, Togo and Epsom in the boutique. So for example, a box cuff Constance is actually going to be a few thousand dollars more than a Epsom one. But yeah, a lot of people prefer the look of box cuff to Epsom because they say Epsom looks a little bit too artificial. Um, but yeah, I don't mind it too much myself. Um, I even have a mosaic bag in Epsom, which is a similar kind of vibe to the Constance. And it is quite stiff, actually. But um, yeah, I do like how if it does rain, I'm not as you know worried about it if it gets a few drops on it as opposed to if it was like a box calf or something like that next one of my favorite leathers actually is swift but i don't love it in all bags swift was introduced i think in 2007 all right um it was it was re re replaced gulliver leather in 2004 so if you look at vintage bags in a smooth grain that looks similar to swift um it, that used to be called gulliver so it, it seems like hermes they kind of always update their leathers they don't always stick to the same same types. Um, similar to the Couchevel, um, they discontinued that and introduced Epsom. So Swift leather, I really like it in slouchy bags. Like for example, I think it looks really great in my Lindy. Now Swift does scratch pretty easily, but it does spa well. So if you do get scratches, um, it can be taken out at the bag spa. Um, it does sag really easily as well, and it has this like pillowy, like kind of smushy look to it, which I think looks great in a Lindy, which is already a very relaxed bag that you kind of like to have that natural curvature with it. So Lindy's, they do come in Clemence as well, um, typically, but I think it looks quite good in the Swift because it really holds the color well. It's got a smoother grain to it um, and it really soaks up that um, like green color which this is a granny green from um, the early 2010s and it's a discontinued color as well but um, some people don't love Swift because it can feel a little bit more delicate, uh, particularly in a Birkin. I've noticed that Swift doesn't always hold the structure as well, just depending on how you look after it. Um, I saw a lot of pre-loved Swift bags in Japan that were quite kind of beaten up and wavy and I, I think if you get it wet it can affect the leather as well it can kind of warp and get a bit weird um I have got water drops on this and it's just brushed off and it's been fine but it's not something that I would chuck around um it can't take that as much as probably like a Togo leather bag but it does look really beautiful and it has a real luxurious look to it um, and in a lot of dressier bags like the Cali pochette you'll commonly see Swift just because it looks a little bit nicer than like a really grainy leather which tends to look a little bit more casual so the benefit of swift is it does hold to color really well and it can look a little bit more elevated in this blue atoll color too it looks really stunning and really striking and it hasn't really slouched much actually in this bullied um, structure this is a bullied 27 the swift has actually held up quite well but i wouldn't say it's as delicate as you would expect actually i've got scratches on my swift bags but they're not that noticeable and i like the softness of it and i also love how lightweight it is it is much more lightweight than um togo or clemence cool and i find that swift especially in like a lindy or something like that it's it's really fuss free and um it's really comfortable to wear again swift is more expensive than Ep like epsom togo and clement so if you were to get a birkin from the store swift is going to be a few thousand dollars more than the togo actually which is kind of interesting another pretty good leather is the nagonda leather which i've only ever seen in garden party bags but it's a really durable leather like it's a very thick grain this i believe is also a calf skin but it's got like a really thick nature to it and it's also really resistant to like water and spills and I, and I know for myself I've spilled coffee on this and I've really beaten this bag up and it's been really durable. I know if, if this was Swift it might not be as durable but it's it's been really robust and it really suits the garden party bag which is a bit more of a casual style you won't get this leather in birkins or kelly's or anything like that i think because maybe it is a little bit too thick and 
it doesn't look as elevated but it's really great for day-to-day -day use and very durable so it's a leather that will hold up quite well um i do find that on the garden party bags the corners do get scuffed up quite easily i think it's probably because it doesn't have feet either so it does kind of wear out at the corners but other than that it, it won't scratch very easily and it will take it, it will be able to take some sort of like spillages and water really well popular leather that i often see in lindy bags and some kelly's as well is evercolor leather um and i do have one piece in evercolor it's this um plip clutch and it does take to color really well it has a real softness to it um it's not as delicate as um ever grain leather or um, ever calf apparently they're a little bit more delicate this one it can it, it does scratch like i have actually got some scratches on it and it's pretty lightweight but it does take to color quite well and the grain is not as prominent as on like Clemence or Togo so it lends itself to look a little bit more elevated as well but it's not like as common I would say um I don't see it all the time but I have noticed it in uh like Lindy bags quite often ever color leather um and yeah um I think it's quite a beautiful finish um i also used to have a ruley bag in evercolor leather which was quite nice and i think i've even seen it in constance bags so if you don't like the rigidity of epsom you might prefer evercolor it just has a little bit more flexibility to it um and it does take to color really beautifully actually now thinking about it i think in a constance it could be quite nice and probably a little bit less um uh yeah toy-like compared to epsom which can some people don't like epsom because it lo looks a little bit too like manufactured evercolor has more of like a natural looking uh grain to it and it it has more of a softness to it so it's going to be easier to open the flap and um it's a bit slouchy i suppose but yeah it's quite a pretty leather as well on the her bag uh this is a leather that i don't know if it comes in many other bags but on the her bag it has this really thick leather uh it has like a raw side on one side and the other side is this smooth grain that i think it can patina over time and change color but because this is dark you wouldn't notice um it does scratch quite easily but it's called uh vache hunter leather so it actually scratches really easily it dents really easily but it's it's like very um stiff it's very rigid um and it has like a real like natural feel to it but it's a nice leather to have on the her bag which is very very casual um and it has like a real robust feel to it uh so that's Vache hunter i don't know if it comes in many other bags but it's pretty common on the her bag which you won't like get any other like random grainy leathers on this it's usually just in this smooth uh Vache hunter leather and then on the rodeo charms you'll often see milo lambskin so uh, weirdly i don't think that hermes use lambskin that often unlike you know brands like chanel or something like that or even uh Celerot will use lambskin but they do use it a little bit on the uh rodeo and pegasus charms and this milo lambskin is like the softest leather i've ever felt like it's just the most gorgeous soft leather i actually think Jacob has a milo lambskin a-line bag uh, so you can get some bags in the Milo lambskin, but it's pretty rare. It's not very common. But if you do want to appreciate the Milo lambskin, uh, if you get a little bag charm, it is a nice little like tactile experience. Um, and these bag charms, they come in like a rainbow of colors and the Milo lambskin does hold to color really well. And it showcases that gorgeous uh, shade really beautifully as you can see compared to the epsom which is a little bit more of a shadowy look i hope that was a little bit helpful that's just some of the hermes leathers that are pretty popular uh let me know what is your favorite hermes leather or uh what's your favorite hermes bag have you experienced hermes leather thanks for listening to my blabby video today hope you enjoyed it and i'll talk to you guys on my next video bye